through our outreach at Methadone Clinics, we got to meet Angel. Angel got moved uh, from a shelter that was close to his clinic, which is his healthcare, all the way across town uh, to the other part of the city, where to a shelter that didn't even have beds. Um, they were sleeping on the floor. And our organizers at the Homeless Union, which is part of Boko, got the shelter to put him in a bed. I myself helped someone. They didn't know how to use the internet. I helped them uh, fill out their stimulus check. The next morning at 8 a.m., which was quite early for myself, I got a phone call and this woman was elated. She was so happy. Her check was already direct deposited and now she had money for get, to get groceries for her children for that month. Um, I encountered uh, one gentleman. Um, he is a veteran who was who is HIV positive. Um, and recently he was told that he'd have less than a year to live. His enthusiasm to be more active with his community um, is really inspiring. Um, I had um, the, the privilege, really, to talk to a health uh, care service provider um, named Cynthia. She chooses um, to get up every day and go to work um, in the midst of this ep epidemic, but she is going into work because she knows that a lot of the people she serves um, would not have access to her any other way. And she was scared. Family members weren't calling in to check up on her. The hospital she worked for really wasn't making any wellness calls and checking in on her. And she was very, very glad that I'd called her. Um, and we just connected in such a real, um, such a human way. I got to see some, uh, a gentleman, uh, cat calling a, a, a woman who was passing by. That didn't sit well with me. So I called him out on it. He was, was very, very quick to break down and to, and to tell me that there was nobody that really cared about him, that he also didn't care about anyone else. And I spoke to him about Foco. I told him that that he definitely he's got a place that he could be accepted. That we care about folks like him.